Okay. So we have six participants. Eight. We might wait for 30 seconds for more participants. Yeah, I will start my presentation now. So hello everyone, it's a great pleasure to give you this online presentation on gene-free mice for microbiome research and drug development. This presentation will be given in three parts. I would like to kick off with an introduction of gene-free mice, then discuss their application, and finally introduce our plan forms and service. Let me introduce some background uh, information of gene-free mice first. Also gene, free, sorry, also, gene free animals have been studied over 100 years. Not many people know what are gene free animals, or more specifically, what are gene free mice. The term gene free refers to an animal being completely devoid of microbes, including bacteria, virus, fungi, parasites, and protozoa throughout its life, lifetime. The concept of gene-free animals was put forward more than a century ago by Lewis in 1885. At that time, he believed that surviving without bacteria was impossible. However, 10 years later in 1895, Nato and Tefilter at Berlin University produced the first GF animal, which, uh, which is uh, junior pigs, survived for 13 days. Then, Kuster designed the first isolated prototype in which the gene-free goats were maintained for months. Till 1946, the first uh, gene-free rat was established. And in 1950s, isolators were uh, invented, which is light, practical, inexpensive house for gene-free mice. So after the house was built, the first GF uh, mice were successfully developed in 1959. So, so according to the definition of national standard and the microbial containment, experiment animals can be divided into clean grade, SPF grade, gnotobiotics grade, and gene-free grade. The clean mice was maintained with minimal biosecurity and health surveillance and not screened for any microbes, including pathogens. Specific pathogen-free mice were partially screened for microbes and free of specific pathogen. Gonotobiotic mice refer to mice in which every microorganism present is defined. Same with gene-free mice, gonotobiotic mice were also raised and maintained in gene-free isolators. And as mentioned before, uh, gene-free mice are free of all microorganisms. So nowadays, uh, SPF and GF mice were extensively used for scientific researches. So comparing with uh, SPF mice, some differences were found, uh, mainly in the uh, anatomical and the physiological uh, characters, such as uh, GI tract, circulatory system, immune system, metabolism, and reproduction system. So let's step into this one by one. You can see here the most significant change of gene-free mice is their gastrointestinal tract, of which has an enlarged cecum due to the accumulation of undigested food debris. It has been reported that the intestinal wall and mucosal layer of gene-free mice are thinner, and the renewal of intestinal epithelia is slower than that of SPF mice. So for the circulatory system, gene-free mice have smaller heart, lower higher output, reduced blood volume, and increased RBC count and hemodacrit output. In addition, the immune system between, between gene-free and SPF mice is also different. Specifically, gene-free mice are deficient in lymph node tissues, including spleen, thymus, and lymph nodes, leading to a decreased CD4 plus and CD8 T cells. In addition, the gut associated lymph node structure are also influenced by the absence of microbiota, so making uh, gene-free mice uh, has a deficient gout. 
Furthermore, the number of IgA in expression B cells is decreased, resulting in the reduced production of IgA due to these mentioned immune deficiencies. So GF mice are more sus uh, suspicious to infections than SBF mice. So another one for the met metabolic system, gene free mice are characterized with uh, decreased body fat and, metabolic, uh, and uh, decreased metabolic rate but increased food and water intake. So next to that, the absorption and retention of calcium and magnesium uh, in GF mice is better than that of uh, SBF mice. Last, GF mice are more sensitive to high cholesterol diet, and it has been reported that the level of blood cholesterol in GF mice were two times higher than that in SBF mice when fed with uh, high cholesterol diet. So for the reproduction, the characteristics uh, as the absence of gut microbiota can affect their uh, reproduction. Gene free female has a uh, prolonged diastrophic period, reduced diastrophic frequency and copulation, and reduced implantation and uh, fertility rates. So, uh, what you see here is some of our data showing the anatomical and physiological differences between SPF and GF mice. The result shows that SPF mice have a higher body weight and bigger heart, lung, liver, spleen, and penis than that in GF mice. But the sinker of GF mice is twice bigger than that of SPF mice. So our own data recapitulates most of the phenotype differences that are reported in literature. But interestingly, also, the differences were found in the physiological characters between SPF and GF mice, the hematological and blood chemistry, blood biochemical par uh, parameters had no significant differences between uh, gene free and SPF mice. So, this is our first part. So, for the second part, I would uh, like to introduce uh, in applications of GF mice. Briefly, the application of GF mice, mainly uh, in two aspects, so which are interaction and selection and evaluation. For the interaction part, GF mice can be used for comparing the physiological differences between uh, between them, which has we did before, and yeah, we, uh, like uh, what I just discussed. So second, it is a great model for investigating the function of certain genes. Because this model, gene free mice model, eliminate or eliminates uh, microbial interference. So third, they can be used for studying the cause effect, that is, whether microbiota is associated with or leads to certain diseases. So for to that, GF models allow us to explore the impact of gut microbiota on disease development of different aged mice. So for the selection and evaluation part, GF mice can be used to explore live biotherapeutic products by colonization of uh, LBP candidate in GF mice models. In addition to that, uh, GF mice can be used for construction of humanized gut microbiota mice model, which allows for the evaluation of functional food and therapeutic agents. So these are all applications, or let's say potential applications of gene free mice. Now we understand that gene free mice can be used for this type of researches, but which research area or which researchers now are using GF mice? Let's see. So first is oncology. There's a pop-up of two clinical studies reporting that fecal microbiota transplantation could enhance the response of PBR antibody in non-response normal patient. Researchers about <coughs> researchers about gut microbiota and anti-tumor agents interaction were being used today. So the Volume two paper studies anti-tumor effect, or it says the effect of microbiota on anti-tumor agent by using GF mice models. So this is for the oncology part. In addition to that, the immunological research also use GF mice. Blood microbiota can affect our immune response. I think you all know. And in order to study the underlying mechanisms, GF mice is, is uh, in this, um, indispensable models for those interaction. So next, for metabolic, uh, for metabolic diseases, researchers also require uh, gene-free mice models, as shown in this paper. 
Researchers, tra uh, researchers transplanted the microbiota from twins' discount of obesity patients into separate groups of recipient gene free mice. The fecal microbiota from obese twin can lead to an increase in body weight with the low fat diet. While transplantation of the lean co twins microbiota did not show this effect. Here, the gene free mice is a good model to study the cause and uh, cause effect relationship between gut microbiota and diseases. So for the, for the neurological researchers, gut microbiota can affect our neural system via the gut brain axis. This paper demonstrates that gut microbiota enhanced the uh, motor defects, microglia activation, and alpha synuclein pathology. They also found that after colonization of the microbiota, de microbiota derived from Parkinson's patient into gene-free mice, the motor dysfunction was enhanced. So to sum up, gene-free models were used in many research areas nowadays, and the, the usage of gene-free mice in microbiome researches definitely can add the cred uh, credibilities of our research paper. So this is the uh, second part for the applications. So the last part is about our platforms and the service that we can offer. So our platforms were made up by two branches. The first is Gym Free Mouse Models <laughs> Supply Platforms, which is a place where we raise and maintain our Gym Free Mice. The second is Research Platforms, where we have our own microbi uh, microbiology lab, animal experimental platform, and immunology lab. The research platforms allow us to provide high qualified experimental service for our customers. So let me first uh, introduce our gene free mouse model supply platform. So the mouse supply platform has nearly 2000 square meters containing GF animal facility, uh, facilities and hundreds of GF isolators. Three bedding rooms contains 1,300 cages will use simultaneously to ensure enough yield. To make sure gene free, uh, to make sure the, the gene free status of our mice, we use the standard protocol for material sterilization, including autoclave, peroxy acid uh, disinfection, and irradiation. For each batch of material biological indicators were used to ensure our sterilization process is effective. So the, what you can see here is these are the uh, current available GF mice models in stock. So including the normal inbred string GF black 6, RBC, outbreak string ICR, and other disease or immune deficient strains such as NCH, NCHX, or we also have IL-10 knockout mice, uh, gym free mice. So when you, after you buy these GF models from us, we can, uh, we will deliver them to you. So especially for the overseas customers, after you purchase our um, models, we use shipper sleeves to transport. So the maximum capacity of the uh, shipper sleeve are two cages. Each cage can contain six to eight mice, depending on the cage. As an age for three to four weeks mice, 16 mice can be put into the shipper sleeve and 40 mice for five to six weeks old and 12 mice for seven to eight weeks old. So according to our experience, this kind of delivery manner has been proved to be effective to keep a, uh, keep a sterilized uh, environment during the transportation. So in addition to the GF mice cells, in our gene free spline platform, we are also able to do the aseptic uh, purification, which was achieved by either in visual fertilization or case range section. As a proceed with our knockout or project, we already obtained more than 20,000 conditional knockout mice. So combining the Pope AOAP mouse with our aseptic purification technique, I guess you can already imagine how many kinds of gene-free mice we can get. So this is also why I call it mission possible. So let me summarize a bit. So our gene-free mouse supply platform can 
of our service include first, different gene free mice stream cells. The second, septic purification. This is our first platform. So next to that, we have our research platforms. The research platform was consist of microbiology lab, animal experimental platform, and immunology uh, lab, which allows us to pre provide one-stop experimental service for our customers. So for the microbiology lab, we offer service like uh, bacteria identification and preservation, bacteria quantification and quantification, and fecal derived microbiota extraction, and also anaerobic culture. So for the animal experiment platforms, what you can see here is the workflow of our platform. So everything before starting animal experiments will be sterilized as mentioned before. Followed to that, all the needed materials and gene free mice for experiment, experiment will be put into isolators and all the experimental execution will be carried out in isolator. Alternative to isolators, for some projects, we also use ISO cages and perform experiments in the coupled biosafety flow cabinet. So after the termination of animal experiments, we have immunology labs that allows us to do uh, multiple analysis. We got cell culture lab enable us to do the cell related analysis and flow cytometer to do cell sorting, which is needed uh, if you want to study the uh, but microbiota and immune system interaction. And lastly, histological lab for staining, immunohistochemical analysis, ELISA, Western blood, and general blood chemistry, and also hematological analysis. However, what service we can offer based on those research platforms? Actually, we have already done hundreds of projects from both academia and industry customers. Those projects in uh, this project includes surveys or techniques like uh, fecal microbiota transplantation, uh, microbial colonization, drug efficiency evaluation, disease mode construction, and also some other customized service. I would like to elaborate this service in the following slides. So for the fecal microbiota transplantation, here is a brief description. So no matter if it's, uh, the physics is from mice or humans, the first step is, uh, is the first step is extraction. So we will first extract the uh, um, um, microbiota isolates from the feces, and then we will transplant them into gene-free mice by garbage. Normally, feces will be collected during the experiments for bacteria detection or sequencing, depending on the design of specific experiments. So in the end, the customers normally will perform 16S sequencing on collected fecal samples to compare the similarities of the flora before and after transplantation to evaluate the transplant transplantation efficiency. What I showed here is a project we conducted before investigating the recovery of phenotypes after fecal microbiota transplantation. We can clearly observe that the cecum was dramatically decreased and the liver was increased after fecal microbiota transplantation. So I guess now is, uh, it is very clear how we perform the uh, fecal microbiota transplantation experiment. So of course, next to that, uh, single bacterial colonization was performed by us a lot. Comparing, actually comparing to the fecal microbiota transplantation, the process is relatively simple, but the gene-free environment maintenance is much more strict. In brief, um, bacteria stream was recover, recovered by anaerobic culture, after which administered them to gene-free mice by garbage. What we should note here is the frequency of single bacterial transplantation is really depends on the pro, uh, pro, pro, uh, property of the colonized strain, like uh, whether the strain is uh, acid resistant or biosort tolerant, whether it is easy to, co uh, to culture or colonize. So what you can see here is a uh, is, uh, terosid bacteria that we colonized and the verification of the bacteria. So this is for the microbiota and bacteria parts. So in addition to those two parts, we actually conducted an oncological study before, and this study was the basis for further anti-tumor studies. Specifically, we have inoculated a tumor serum line 
simultaneously in both SPF and GF mice after from uh, after the form, uh, formation of the solid tumors and the mouse PD1 antibody was administered to mice and the anti-tumor effect of antibody was evaluated in GF and SPF mice at the end. So the results showed that the anti-tumor effect of anti-mouse PD-1 is less efficient in GF mice, which might be the deficient in the adaptive immunity. But this also gives us a larger window to study the anti-tumor effect of a combined use of immune checkpoint inhibitors such as PD-1 with other probiotics. So adding to that, there is a uh, there is an ongoing oncological study aiming to evaluate the anti-tumor effect after the combination of certain bacteria with anti-mouse PD-1. So what I want to emphasize here is even though our experiment used only anti-mouse PD-1 antibody, it does not limit it to this one certain immune checkpoint inhibitor. We can also perform other oncological studies that our customer want. So last but not least, uh, we also have constructed a lot of disease models, which is uh, also part of our customi uh, customized services. So we have uh, constructed many disease models, like uh, by different methods, of course. So uh, including the uh, hospital rosis model by ovarian removal and obese and colon cancer model by high fidelity induction and the pancreatitis by drug induction and other disease models like uh, uh, we also impair the, uh, the gut uh, barrier integrity by hy hyperoxia. So this is uh, uh, what you see as white is the paper we, <coughs> sorry, this is a paper published we cooperate with our uh, academic partners. So taken together, our platforms provide service includes not limited to the evaluation of gene-free genetic engineered mice in stock gene-free mice supply, including black eggs, PBC, ICR, NCG, and IOTNOCA streams, and uh, fecal bacteria or single bacteria colonization, evaluation of the anti-tumor effect of bacteria, and uh, GF disease model construction and also other customized uh, services. So if anything I present, uh, uh, I present with your research interest or anything of our service can help your research, please do not contact us via this contact information. So thanks a lot for your attention and all questions are welcomed. So for the question, I will read it out. <clears throat> if the sterile mice are put into sterile bags, can they be raised in SPF condition? So my answer is no, because uh, if you want to keep the GF mice uh, GF uh, gene free environment throughout its lifetime, or you want to use GF for any, uh, for any uh, further experiments, you have to put you have to make sure that the uh, before expense or also throughout as uh, kind of the environment throughout your uh, your experiments they have to be completely gene free so any other questions let's see does my answer answer your question Marby? So what is the frequency commonly used for, for FMT? So this is actually a good question. So it's a practical question. Normally we will uh, we'll do three times transplantation with one day interval and the uh, duration is one week. So after one week of three times, uh, normally the uh, microbiota will be colonized. So just uh, let's see. 
So what is your general method to detect the duration test? So I think you mean what's the method we detect whether our gym form is, uh, was already be contaminated. So for the contamination detest, detect, detection, and then we have three methods. So first we can stain, uh, stain the uh, surfaces and uh, check under the microscopy to see whether there are staining bacteria. This is the first method. So for the second method, we can do the uh, anaerobic culture. And to after like uh, one or two days, we can count, we we'll see whether there's uh, some bacteria on the agar plate. And the third method is uh, uh, PCR. I hope I answer your question, Minji. So the next question is GF mouse more sensitive to some tumor or metabolic disease? This is actually a very good question. So for uh, Lu Chen, so for, for this question, because I think for even so for different tumors in SPF mice, they have different sensitivities. So you put it, different uh, tumors to no matter it's GF mice or SPU mice, it will go differently. So there's no study compare with, uh, uh, I mean, let's see, there's no study shown that uh, GF mice is more sensitive to those things, to different tumors. So there's no comparisons. But definitely if you use diff different uh, tumors, you use different tumors to inoculate them, of course, they will go differently. Is this your question, Zhang Lu Chen? So next question, Mawe, is since there is such a big difference between sterile mice and SPF mice, can they go normally for solid tumor? So if you, if I understand you correctly, so you're on, you're asking whether the solid tumor can be formed in GF mice, right? So according to literatures and also our own data, of course, solid tumor can um, can grow. Let's say can form a solid tumor in GF mice, but the size of the tumor is different because GF mice is uh, immune deficient, of course. Uh, have different, uh, the, I mean, let's say the size of the tumor formed in GF mice is different with in SPF mice. So any more questions? Let's see. Yep. So actually, uh, adding to your question, Mawe, uh, I would say, According to our own data, we found the tumors formed in GF mice is smaller than that in SPF mice. So, this uh, and also the uh, antibody, let's say ICI, the immune checkpoint inhibitor, is less efficient in GF mice. So, based on this fact, actually, if you want to study whether certain probiotics or uh, certain microbiota, let's say bacteria, can enhance the uh, effect, the anti tumor effect of certain antibodies, this is I would say GF, GF model is a uh, great model because they give you a large window. Also, I see one more question. So compared to the antibiotic mice, what's uh, the advantages of GF mice? Because it, <laughs> yeah, this is a fact because it's actually very expensive. So for the, compared to the, uh, antibiotics mice. So GF mice is completely devoid of any microbiomes. So if you want to study the effect of like one bacteria or the interaction between one bacteria or a few bacteria with your immune system or with other phenotypes, you have to use uh, gene free mice. So for the antibiotic, antibiotic treated mice, they still have some bacteria left and it can also induce uh, grow of the antibiotic resistant strains. So this is uh, the very, uh, the very obvious advantages for the GF model. Thanks for your questions. So if there are no more questions, I would like to close this, this webinar. And thanks for your time.
Thank you.